Hello everyone! Continuing my solo adventures, last month I did something I've never done before. I went to a convention on my own. In the past, I've always gone to conventions with friends, but this year when Emerald City Comic Con rolled around and I realized I was free that weekend, I decided that it was the perfect opportunity to try and see what it was like to go to a convention by myself. I will admit that I am quite spoiled with the fact that I do live in Seattle and have access to public transportation, which made this being kind of like a spur of the moment thing for me quite easy and accessible. I was able to buy the pass online. I think like the day before, I think I ended up buying it on Saturday. Originally, I was hoping to go on Saturday, but the tickets sold out and it was also raining, so it kind of worked out that I didn't go until Sunday. Now, I've also been kind of a homebody lately. I've just had a lot going in my life that was quite stressful, so it was fun to have a good excuse to get out of the apartment and go out and do something that was a little bit outside of my comfort zone. I decided to head from my home into Seattle Center, which is home of the Space Needle and also where the monorail is. Now a bit of a monorail tangent. I love the monorail in Seattle. It was built for the 1962 World's Fair. It is a really, really cool piece of Seattle's history. Unfortunately, it literally only has one stop. It goes from Seattle Center, so kind of the middle of Seattle, into Westlink, which is kind of into the downtown area of Seattle, which is right by Pike Place Market and the Convention Center. So it is quite convenient if you're ever having like a tourist day or weekend in Seattle. Definitely take the monorail. It's a really easy way to get from a lot of the really cool stuff at Seattle Center like the Science Museum and the Experience Music Project or oh my god it's not called that anymore the Museum of Pop Culture and then also be able to check out Pike's Place Market and more of downtown Seattle. So I just love the monorail. I've rode on it. Elvis has rode on it. So there's some iconic people that you can think about when you go ahead and ride the monorail. It's also just like it's really cute and it's an easy way to get around. From the Westlake stop I started to make my way towards the convention center. I would say it's about like a five minute walk from the monorail to the convention center. I was able to stop and get some coffee on the way. I actually got a London fog because <laughs> I can't drink coffee right now, but it was from Monorail Espresso, which is a literal hole in the wall coffee place. That's one of my favorite things about Seattle in general. It's just everywhere you go, there's going to be somewhere selling coffee. And a lot of the times it's really, really good coffee. And if for some reason you don't keep up with Seattle Convention Center news, they've actually built an entirely new building for the convention center. So they do still have their old buildings, which they are still using, but then they have this brand new convention center building. I'm a little sad about like probably the slow retirement of the old building. Again, they are going to keep using it. I just have so many positive memories of the old Washington State Convention Center and it's even featured in The Last of Us Part 2, which is like a really weird thing to see from a place that you've been before. But the new building is really, really gorgeous. It is huge. It has a ton of natural lighting. It's kind of a very modern look building that's very cubey with tons of glass, but it also has a lot of beautiful artwork, many of which is by indigenous artists. So it kind of feels like a really cool combination of Seattle's kind of tech and industry side as well as the more like human side with the artwork and the representation of indigenous peoples as well. So I think it is quite a beautiful building and I really enjoyed getting to see the convention there. I immediately went, of course, and picked up my badge. The badge pickup was in its usual location. If you've ever gone to either SakuraCon or Emerald City Comic Con, it's always in kind of the same building. And the funny thing is, so I had gotten myself really excited to be spending this day on my own. Like I had said before, I've been to many conventions with my group of friends. And so when you're hanging out with friends, typically you're trying to find things that, you know, everybody wants to do, or you're trying to keep in mind how everyone's feeling and taking breaks and everything like that. You also, of course, get to like hang out with your friends, which is fantastic. But I was honestly quite excited to get to experience doing things like solely at my own pace and getting to look at things however long or short I wanted to speed walk my way through the convention. So I had gotten it quite hyped up in my mind, which I think helped for like getting me out there and going there, just being like, yeah, I'm really gonna enjoy this day. I'm gonna like look at whatever interests me. What was really cool, but also not what I was planning, is immediately as I was getting my badge and putting my little lanyard on it, I had another woman come up to me and go, hey, are you also here alone? Let's hang out together. So I actually ended up spending basically my morning with this other attendee who was super friendly. So 
if you are feeling a little bit, I don't know, wary of going to a convention alone, just know that you might end up just making a friend there as long as you kind of go in with a positive attitude and you're friendly. I think there might be a little bit of bias in my case just because I am a woman and I do think that in some cases women nerds tend to kind of stick together or be a little bit more friendly with each other because we <laughs> know what it's like sometimes to not be in the majority in convention spaces if that makes sense. But it was really nice to have someone to kind of hang out with and chat with. And so I would say if you are nervous about going, just know you like might end up completely accidentally making a friend. <laughs> I think that that's the best part about conventions is people do tend to be quite friendly and for the most part, like very enthusiastic about what they love. Like if you have, you know, something in common with them, if you see someone wearing a pin or a shirt or something from something you also enjoy or cosplay, you can talk to them about it. And that's the cool thing with conventions. I will say I have had some more negative interactions at conventions, um, which is why I was feeling a little bit wary about going by myself. This time everything went really smoothly though and I didn't have any issues. But just remember if you do have any issues with anyone that is also attending the convention, you are allowed to go and talk to security, especially if they're making you uncomfortable in any way. Please go talk to security and make sure that like, you know, the convention's supposed to be a place where you can feel safe. Like, full stop. I did end up parting ways with my con buddy because like I said, I was kind of hoping to <laughs> enjoy my time and just take my own time there. So we did part ways and I just had a very thorough, thorough time with the artist alley and the dealer's room. The artist alley in the new convention space is so well lit. It's got these big windows and the dealer's room is actually in the basement, but honestly for the dealer's room, I feel like that's fine. If you haven't been to a large convention before, it can be definitely a little overwhelming seeing these spaces, but I just love it so much. My brain goes into little goblin mode and I just want to like search around for all of the cool little things. I got these super cute Game Boy earrings from the dealer's hall. I love them so much. Uh, and you just like never know quite what you're gonna find. I ended up picking up um, some washi tape, a couple of different prints, gifts for friends. I love conventions for finding gifts for friends because you just find stuff with like everybody's interests and you're like, oh my God, so many cool artists were there as well. It was actually really neat to get to see some art in person by artists that I was already following online. I was like, oh my God, this this is like the IRL version of what I see on my Twitter, <laughs> on my tweets. There also was quite a range in business sizes, like you had a lot of small independent businesses, and then there were also larger dealers, like Studio Ghibli was there, as well as Bandai. There's quite a range in terms of what interests and companies are there in general, and you can definitely always find something that I think interests you. That's something that I, again, personally love about conventions. There's just like, so much happening. Now, I was a little bummed to see that there weren't very many retro games there. I think it's kind of hard to sell retro games sometimes at convention spaces just because um, things don't tend to be set up in a way that keeps things super secure. So I would completely understand why some retro game stores didn't actually have games there. I was a little bummed out though. I was really hoping to either find some Barbie games or some other games that just looked cool or interesting. It might have also been because it was the last day and that's one of the hard things about going on Sundays is a lot of things have sold out by then which like makes sense. The convention in this case for Emerald City Comic Con had been running for four days already so that is something to keep in mind if you're planning to go to a convention is that the experience, at least for the dealer's room and stuff on Sunday, is going to be very different than Friday. But speaking of experiences, one thing that I really lucked out in being able to go to on Sunday is they had a Twin Peaks panel. Now, I would consider myself to be kind of a casual fan of Twin Peaks. I watched the first season and a half when I was in high school, and I did really enjoy it. I never finished it, though. Again, kind of a casual fan. But one of my best friends, Snuggly, is a very, very big fan of it. So 
So because of like kind of her influence, I decided, hey, you know, it would be really cool to check out the cast of the show and hear more about the experience of being on the show. And it was so nice. First of all, another perk of being there alone is I kind of could just sit wherever I wanted, you know, just <laughs> sneak in and just be a little solo viewer. And a quick side note, while I'm waiting for this panel to start, I just want to talk about my outfit. So I was wearing a Mazurna Falls shirt that I actually designed myself. If you don't know about Mazurna Falls, Mazurna Falls is a PlayStation 1 Japanese exclusive game that's based very, very heavily off of Twin Peaks. I highly recommend checking it out if you're at all into kind of more obscure games or PlayStation 1 games, retro gaming in general. It is a really fun game that I have watched my friend Snuggly play. You got drugs! And I actually designed the shirt for her channel as merch for her. So definitely check that out if you're a Mazurna Falls fan. I was kind of hopeful that someone would like recognize Mazurna Falls out of all the Twin Peaks fan. Nobody did. It's also like my own artwork and not official game artwork. So I like totally get why. But you know, I was kind of hopeful. And I also, for this convention, did wear my Eda bag. Um, now I have a lot of lore, I think, when it comes to my Eda bags. But basically with my Mew Ichigo Eda bag, I have some kind of uh, complicated feelings <laughs> with it just because I kind of had some like massive spending issues when I was buying the items for this bag. It was definitely an emotional response to some negative stuff that was happening in my life at the time. So it's hard to not like associate that with the bag itself if that makes sense. But I'm trying really hard to just be able to like enjoy the bag as a cute accessory that I wear. And I actually got a ton of compliments on it. People thought it was really cool. Some people took pictures of it, which was really cool. And even people like outside of the convention center, like I went to a store and one of the employees at the store was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you need to like keep wearing stuff like that. Cause that is just so cool, which is really sweet. So it was really nice to wear it and make some kind of like positive memories with it and seeing such a positive reaction to it. And I even was able to get a Ichigo Bell Bell charm from the new series uh, that was in the dealer's hall. So that was kind of cool. But back to the Twin Peaks panel, this was a very fun panel to sit in on. It is just really cool to see actors talk about an experience that they genuinely really, really enjoyed. I think I hear a lot of horror stories when it comes to acting about how like negative some actors' experiences can be on set. So it's really nice to just hear people that really enjoyed what they were doing and really enjoy engaging with people that are fans of their work um, and that really enjoyed working with the director of Twin Peaks. So I just had like a really fun time listening to people talk about their work and the things that they're passionate about. Yeah, we figured we'd go on for a few more years anyway. Highly recommend if you ever get the chance to hear or see any of them talk. I just think it was a super cool experience. And it was around four o'clock by then and I had realized that I hadn't ate anything. So I decided I would go ahead and get some food. Now, I don't have the best of luck when it comes to convention center food. I think it is honestly, usually quite overpriced and kind of mediocre. So I wanted to branch out and go somewhere outside of the convention center. And I am so glad I did because right by the convention center, literally just a few blocks away, is a place called Nana's Green Tea. And I am kind of obsessed now. So Nana's Green Tea is a Japanese restaurant. It is also a chain, I believe. So they do kind of some like rice bowls and curries and things like that, but they are mostly a matcha, green tea, latte, and parfait, like sort of more dessert style place. Parfaits are like super big in Japan and maybe other countries as well, but not super big in the US, but I hope parfait culture becomes more of a thing here because I love them. So I ended up going there and getting kind of my like breakfast, lunch, dinner of the day. It was super, super busy in there. So I actually ended up eating outside in 40 degree weather, but it was delicious. I got the chicken katsu curry as well as a matcha parfait. And oh my God, it was just so good. The curry was delicious. I really love Japanese style curry. Parfait was just perfect. It had vanilla soft serve. It had like the delicious kind of like earthy matcha ice cream. It had red bean paste. It was just like such a pleasant combination of flavors. Again, 
so, so good. I would highly recommend if you go to any conventions or are just like in Seattle, checking out Nana's green tea. So delicious. I really enjoyed it. I literally just brought my mom and sister there as well recently because I enjoyed it so much. After having a delicious full meal, the convention was actually coming to an end because it does end earlier on Sundays. So I decided to head home. It was freezing cold out by that point. Definitely probably didn't help that I just had a, a ice cream parfait outside. So I basically zoomed home. And then for the rest of my evening, I decided to kind of continue on with like things that I enjoyed. So I took a bath and then spent my evening filming some TikToks um, because <laughs> I feel like this is kind of a funny thing about me. I don't know. When it comes to my TikToks, especially if I do any unboxings or things like that, I kind of like to film as many of them as at once as I can. So I can just like set everything up, film, 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 and then edit, you know, through the week or whatever. So I went ahead and filmed some TikToks, including like a haul of what I got at Emerald City Comic Con and some other unboxings things. And then I got into bed and cuddled with my cat Yuska while reading a book, which is just like the perfect end to a very nice day. Overall, I'm super happy I went. I know it can be really intimidating to go to a convention alone. I think I'm lucky just going into it that I've been to conventions before, so I kind of knew what to expect. But in terms of what I would recommend, if you're interested in going alone, definitely decide what it is that you're interested in going to do or see. Is there a specific actor you really wanna see? A panel that you'd really wanna see? Are you in it to shop? And then kind of plan your day around that. Like, which day do you wanna go? Is it Monday? Day, is it Sunday? Saturday is always going to be the busiest day of the convention, so keep that in mind as well. If maybe you're like me and you don't want to be around like the biggest crowd of people, Sunday or Friday are probably going to be better options for that. And just kind of like go with an open mind. If you want to talk to people, you can definitely start up conversations. If you kind of have a friendly smile on your face, people might start up conversations with you. Or if you do kind of just want to have a solo adventure and not really talk to people, that's totally fine as well. Again, conventions tend to be pretty like forgiving spaces where you can just go and enjoy things that you like with other people that probably <laughs> enjoy it too. Give yourself permission to come and go as you want. Like it's okay to leave the convention if you're feeling overwhelmed or if you need to get food or anything like that. You don't have to like hardcore be there for every second. Like I hope that this was a interesting video to watch about my experience going to Emerald City Comic Con and for anybody that was like feeling apprehensive about maybe going to a convention alone, I hope that you can and that you will enjoy it. All right, that's the end of the video today. I hope that you're all having a fantastic day. Feel free to give this video a like if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this face, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.